Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There are in Holy Scripture few places where we can find more glorious, comforting, and reassuring promises than the promises which dripped from Jesus' lips and were recorded for us and read in today's Gospel from John 14. What more could we really ask for than what Jesus has told us here? Jesus, who himself died and rose again and has ascended into heaven. What more could we ask for than the promises he's given? Promises that go like this. There is a place for you in the Father's house. Promises like this. There is life after death. This is the truth that you could not see with your eyes, but that Jesus himself has made clear, made known to you. And that he has opened the way there, the path of faith in him, in his death and his resurrection. Jesus has even told us, that he has gone to personally prepare a place just for you, and that his return is not merely for his own glory, it's for you. To come and get you, and to take you to be there, in that place that he has so lovingly made ready, just for you. The most comforting and reassuring promises and yet, and yet, Jesus felt compelled to preface some of the most glorious words in all of Holy Scripture with a warning and a command. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. And if what follows is any indication, then that great and yet was both justified and needed. For those beautiful words had barely fallen from Jesus' lips when he ran into not one but two hearts that were troubled. Hearts that either weren't listening or weren't believing or both. First, there is the troubled heart of Thomas who appears to have stopped listening after he heard Jesus say that he was going away. That was where Thomas fixated. On the fact that Jesus was no longer going to be there for him to see and to talk to face to face. And this was troublesome to Thomas. Lord, we don't know. Those are the words of a troubled heart. Of a heart that thinks it would have peace if only... We did know, if only we did know every single step along the way that finally leads to Jesus' side. And right on the heels of Thomas, there is the troubled heart of Philip, a heart that had listened, that had heard all of the promises, and yet that concluded that they were not enough for him to have peace. And Philip knew he knew the thing that would cause his troubled heart to calm down. And he demanded it of Jesus. Lord, show me just a little glimpse of glory. And that will be enough to give me peace. That's what Philip said. And undoubtedly, Jesus aimed to trouble Philip's heart with his Direct reply. How could it be, Philip, that you have been with me for so long and still you don't get it? How come you don't believe and take comfort in the full beauty and the power of the promises that I have given to you? Why don't you believe that my words are God's words? And why, if they are God's words, if God is the one making the promise to you, why don't you believe? 
Why? Well, you needn't ask Philip or Thomas if you wish to know. You need look only at your own heart. For you have those glorious, comforting, and reassuring promises of your Lord Jesus. And yet, and yet, so often, our hearts are not at peace, but are troubled. It seems to me there are few things that go straight to our hearts and stir them up, that leave us restless and on edge, than concerns over health. Whether it's our own health or the health of a loved one. All it takes is a word like diagnosis or cancer or awaiting test results to thoroughly unsettle us, to make our hearts deeply distressed and troubled. All it takes is a disease or an accident or a surgery and all of the things that you know are going to follow, the changes in life that will take place because of it, to unseat us and leave us with no calm. Have you ever been there? Have you ever found yourself troubled over the dementia or the Alzheimer's and what it's doing to your loved one? Have you ever kept vigil at a child's bedside? Have you ever been waiting and the hours or the days seem to go so slowly for the test results to come in? Have you found yourself at a loss as you try to navigate the murky waters of getting help for someone who is deeply depressed or mentally ill? Have you ever found yourself knowing too many news stories, knowing too well all of the different diseases that can strike at any point in a person's life, found yourself fretting, worrying that maybe, just maybe, one of them was going to visit your home. All it takes is a quick search on Google to reveal that what is only a minor symptom could be something so much worse. And it becomes a major thing in our minds, what we fear as the first indicator of a dread disease. Concerns over our health have the power to trouble our hearts. In the DSM-5, the manual that's used for diagnosing mental illness, it even includes a special entry about anxiety over one's health. And it lists as one of the symptoms the compulsive searching of the internet for clues about one's health or about a disease. And I I say that because it seems to me that all of us know what it's like for something to strike us or one of our loved ones and leave our hearts deeply troubled and distressed. And when that happens, we sound like Philip and Thomas. We turn to the Lord and what do we say? Lord, we don't know. I don't know why. You would be allowing this to happen to me. Lord, show me. Let me see your good purpose in this suffering. I want to know the whole road map and every step along the way that you have laid out for me and that hopefully one day ends with me meeting you. If only I knew that, then I'd 
think mistakenly that I would have peace. I need some sign, something for you to show to me that you really are there and that I have not believed in vain. Some little bit of glory, some glimpse of the Father, and that will be enough for me. I need, I need, I need, is what we say. To which Jesus firmly and simply replies, no you don't. When Philip and Thomas turned to Jesus with their troubled hearts, that's what Jesus did. He simply redirected them back to himself and back to those glorious, comforting, and reassuring promises that were dropping from his lips. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father, Jesus said. If you know me, you know the Father. If you listen to me, you have heard the Father. And you have my promise, not that I am going away, but that I am going ahead. And I'm going ahead to prepare that place for you. And so, you have my word that I will also come and take you there to that place that I have made ready just for you. What more do we really need than that? You see, here's what the DSM-5 can't say. It doesn't say that hiding behind every little bit of worry is doubt or unbelief in the promises falling from Jesus' lips. It can't diagnose the real problem because the real problem isn't in our mental or physical health. It's in our hearts where the Holy Spirit must do his work. And it can't prescribe the treatment for us because it won't point us to the place we need to go, which is back to the glorious and reassuring and comforting promises that Jesus has made to us. That Jesus has made to you. And of course, by that, I don't mean that we don't seek medical treatment or advice. But I think it's worthwhile to point out that eventually, no matter what, the best medicine we have is going to fail. And whether it is illness or disease, accident or injury, or just the effects of old age, eventually our health is going to be taken from us. Jesus, though, would not have us be worried about it. Why? Because we have these beautiful promises that he has made to us. The certainty that we have an eternal home with him. The big picture that stretches far beyond the 80 or 90 years we'll spend here in these bodies, prone to failure as they are. Step back from the health crisis for a moment and you'll see just that, right? Whether it strikes a four-year-old who might have 80 years ahead or whether it strikes a 40-year-old who's halfway there or whether it comes when you're 80 or 90, what is it in comparison? What is it in comparison to the mansion in the Father's house that Jesus has prepared and put your name on? 
Really, what more do we need than that? We know no crisis is going to intervene and stop Jesus from keeping his word. He is gone, and he has prepared a place for you. One day he's going to come and take you to go to that place with him. And that means that the only place he hasn't prepared is a place for you to have a troubled heart. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you.